This is the new Lotus Electra, and it's a little bit like the original Porsche Cayenne. You see, it's the antithesis of everything Lotus has done before, but just like the Cayenne did for Porsche back in the early noughties, this new SUV is designed to turn the company's fortunes around. But can it do that? Well, to find out, I'm gonna talk you around the exterior. The interior, I'm gonna take it for a drive. Is it quicker than Porsche's fastest Cayenne today, the Turbo GT? I'm gonna launch it and time it from 0 to 60 miles an hour and over the standing quarter mile because I'm Matt Watson and you're watching Car Wow. Buy, sell, Car Wow. I'm going to start off this video by talking around the exterior design of this new Electra. There's lots of swoopiness and vents and it sort of reminds me of the Lamborghini Urus, but unlike the Lamborghini, every vent you see actually serves a purpose. So air comes in here and then goes over the bonnet to help the car slip through the air. Also, you have active vents here which open and close depending on whether the motor and the battery need cooling. As you move down the side here, you've got some vents which feed air over the wheels. All very purposeful, nothing is just for show. Well, maybe apart from these inserts to these alloy wheels, which are carbon fiber. Speaking of the alloys, they start at 20 inches, rising up to 23s. These are 22s. You can see more aero here, smoothing air over the wheels and then down the side of the car. You've got black surrounds for the door mirrors, for the roof. But if you have the Range Shopping R version, this is carbon fiber. You've got door handles that remain flush until you open the car. I'll need the key, there it is. There we go, then they pop out. You can see it's got a sweeping roof line and this is really interesting. You actually have an air vent here on the rear pillar. Once again, smoothing air over the car to make it as efficient as possible. Then at the back, you have these strange little spoilers plus that thing there. And there's this little bootlet spoiler, which is carbon fiber on this particular car. In fact, you can get a carbon fiber pack to turn all of the black bits into carbon fiber, including the rear diffuser. My favorite bit on this car though, is yet more aero. These vents here, because you can look through and see the huge rear wheels. That's really, really cool. For an SUV, I think it's a very, very good looking car. And there's really nowhere for me to poke my car wow stick of truth because everything is in fact, true. So the new Electra starts at £90,000, rising to £120,000 for the range topping high performance R. Here on the inside, the Electra has a real concept car vibe to it. I love the design of the dash. It's way more interesting than the boring Tesla Model X. Yeah, it's not as fussy as a Lamborghini Urus Performante. However, it feels just as sporty and quality is really good. Way better than anything else from Lotus in the past. The leather feels really nice. Oh yes, everything's solid. The switches have a nice feel to them. Even this little button here, the release for the center console, that feels nice as well. On a Mercedes EQS SUV, while the rest of the interior is nice, that little button to open the center console is horrible. It feels cheap. Not here. They've really made sure that everything that you touch has a nice feel to it. They haven't cheapened out. Another thing I like about it is the steering wheel. Feels nice to hold. The hexagonal shape is a little bit odd. Or is it octagonal? It's not round, but I can't fault the switches. I like what they've done with the switches. They feel kind of futuristic, but they are easy to use. None of the horrible touch sensitive stuff that you get on the latest Mercedes. I like what they've done with these paddles, which obviously aren't for your gear shifters because this doesn't have a normal gearbox, does it? Instead, this does your drive mode and this does your level of regen. Speaking of the steering wheel, there's plenty of adjustment in it so you can find your ideal driving position. And the good news is you can actually get the seat really low for a sporty feel or jack it up really quite high to get a good view out. This is probably a little bit too high for me like this. Let's, let's take it back down again. Another thing I like about it is that you have three screens. So you have your digital driver's display there, which is unlike what I've seen before, because it's very, very small and narrow. Doesn't show you that much information, but it does give you your speed nice and clear. Then there's a huge central infotainment screen. It's very easy to navigate through the different options and set up the card just as you want it. Not confusing in any way, shape or form. And of course, there's Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. One thing is though, that you do have to control the climate through this. So there you go, you do it all through these buttons on the touchscreen, which isn't ideal when you're driving. However, there are some physical shortcut buttons down here. So you can quickly set the temperature using these. 
I've got it on maximum attack. And as you cool it down, the little light goes blue, and as you warm it up, they go red. And the same thing happens on this central air vent as well. Let's just turn that off again. Then there's a third screen for the passenger, which shows what type of music you're listening to, whether you're listening to the radio or you're streaming music. But that's not all. The top two level models get a heads up display as well. And that's really handy. Another thing I like about the interior of this car is the practicality. The door bins are absolutely massive. There is room for one, two, three, four, and probably some more bottles. Then you have the cup holders. So to access them, you just push the covers down and then you can fit a thinner bottle in there and a fatter bottle in there. It's a nice idea that you just press this button inside to make them go back up again. There's some storage there. That's a wireless charging pad. And underneath here, you have a lot of storage, plus your USB ports and your 12 volt socket there as well. Then there's the glove box, which you access by pressing that button. And it's a decent size and lined with felt for a premium feel. Speaking of which, you've got a nice Alcantara-like headlining, big, big vanity mirror, which is handy. You've got some ambient lighting up here and the test of whether this car is a luxury vehicle or not. How damped are the grab handles? I'd say sufficiently so. All very nice here in the front, but what's it like in the back? Here in the back seats of the Electra, there is loads of room. Headroom's good. Knee room's really good. There's lots of foot space as well. You can get two rear seating options, a three-seater bench, or this luxury first-class style seating. We have sporty seats like in the front of the car. Really like these seats, actually. They're very comfy here in the back as well as the front. And of course, they are electrically operated and you can recline them. Oh yes, that is very, very comfortable. So here we have some luxury items, such as the central screen to control lots of different functions, including the air conditioning. And look, it pops up like that. So it's easier for you to see when you're using it. You've also got those clever little cup holders like you have in the front, some storage underneath here with two USB ports. You also have some storage in here. That looks about the right size for a bottle of champagne. Shame it's not called. Maybe it is. This is actually a pre-production car, so the customer cars, the final production versions, will be tweaked ever so slightly, but really this is pretty much what you're going to be getting if you buy an Electra. And what you're going to be getting is a very well-equipped car. All but the entry-level model come with a 2,200-watt sound system from KEF, and it has luxurious, expensive-feeling speaker covers. There's plenty of storage here in the door bins, some pockets on the seat backs, and an extra storage area here. It's all very practical and luxurious. Now let's check out the boots, starting with the one at the front. How much room is under here? Not loads, but enough for your charging cables. I should point this out here. ACBC 1948. There's lots of plaques saying that around the car, all 75. That's to celebrate the year that Lotus started, 75 years anniversary this year. And ACBC isn't an Australian rock band. It stands for Anthony Colin Bruce Chapman. Just so you know, there's another cool plaque actually on the central pillar on the car. Anyway, let's go to the proper boot, the one at the back. So the capacity is 688 litres and it is a big, useful space. I'll just remove the load cover, which is this solid item. More on that in a moment. So there is a bit of a load lip to lift things over, but it's not that big. And you have this scuff plate as well, so you don't damage your paintwork. Um, we've had some things in the boot, hence the mess. You have to excuse me for that. Now, what have we got here? There's some storage underneath there. Unfortunately, there is nowhere to store the parcel shelf in the car, so you just have to lie it down there like that. Hmm. You do have an electronically deployable tow bar. There it is. Oh, I think the car's pleased to see me. And you can raise or lower the air suspension to make the car easier to load or unload. And look how low that's gone. That is incredible. There is one thing that's not quite so incredible though, and that's if you go for the four-seater model, it reduces your boot capacity to 611 litres, and you can't then fold down the back seats. 
the Electra is fitted with a 112 kilowatt hour battery pack, which is good for a range of up to 373 miles. You can charge it at up to 350 kilowatts using DC charging or 22 kilowatts using AC charging. There's two versions available. They both have dual motors. The entry level Electra and Electra S, they come with 603 horsepower. The range topping R model gets 905 horsepower. Let's see how quick that particular model actually is. The Electra R is supposed to do 0 to 60 miles an hour in just under three seconds. But what's the reality? Well, I'm gonna find out. I've got my specialist timing gear up here. I'm gonna launch it. I'm also gonna see how quick it is over the standing quarter mile. I've got it in track mode. There is no launch control. It's just got hold mode. And then I just floor the accelerator. Let's do it. <laughs> Certainly quick. Oh my God, it's all over the place. That was weird. It was quick, but then it started to like weave. It was almost like torque vectoring was doing some strange stuff where I was in some odd crosswind. The 0 to 60 time, three seconds. <laughs> it's good. I'm gonna try it again. Right, let's give it another go. Hopefully it's not gonna do that weird like rear steering thing when I accelerate again. I think it's probably software related to do with the rear wheel steering system on this car. And as this is a pre-production model, hopefully they'll sort that for final production versions that go to customers. But anyway, let's get on with this speed test. Didn't do it then. 10.78, we've gone quicker. <laughs> Not to 60 in under three seconds. Lotus didn't lie. Still not as quick as a Tesla Model X Plaid. That'll do a standing quarter mile in 10 seconds. Now, if you want to find out how quick that car is and see it in a drag race against a Ferrari SF90, click on the pop-out banner up there or follow the link in the description below. Right, let's see how this Electra R dries out on this special handling circuit that Lotus has built at their Wuhan factory. Maybe a big electric SUV, but it's wearing a Lotus badge, so there's plenty for it to live up to. Let's give it a go. This is really quite a tight little track. Whoa, blimey! This thing when you accelerate, that was starting to rotate on me on acceleration. Whoa, crazy. That makes it feel like a high performance internal combustion engine car the way it did that. Whoa, actually, it's a little bit lively. I wonder if that's the rear wheel steering again. It's supposed to assist you and make the car feel more stable at high speed turns and then more nimble at low speed turns, but it's just making it feel a little bit kind of odd. Right, let's go again. I'm gonna accelerate hard down this straight. There, and it's, yeah, just a little bit weavy again. Whoa. I think the brakes on this are so very good. Very powerful, lots of feel to them. You know, for a big electric SUV, this is pretty crazy. Wow, the way it stays so flat through the bends and the amount of grip it has, like there, it's not pushing wide. Whoa, it really gets on it. When you accelerate out of a bend, <laughs> I'm starting to get more used to it now. I think it is the rear steering, it's just, I'm just not quite used to it. It seems to like over rotate the car. I'd like to try one without it but it's standard across the R models. But my gosh, the way this grips and goes around a bend is pretty incredible. The steering, the last Lotus I drove was the Nera, and its steering is definitely better. But then that's got hydraulic steering. This is an electrical steering system. It lacks the kind of feel that you have. And combined with that rear wheel steering, it's just a bit odd at times. Take that out of the equation though, and the way this thing handles and puts down its power is pretty incredible. I mean, there's no way I could drive a Tesla Model X Plaid this quick round here. And I wouldn't want to because the brakes on that thing, while it's got loads of performance and a bit more performance than this, the brakes are nowhere near as good. Yeah, it's almost like an internal combustion engine car where if you put the power down too early, it will definitely start to over rotate on you. But I'm really getting into it now. <laughs> Let's go into a different driving mode because I had this R version in track. 
So I'm going to go into tall. So that's going to raise the ride height on the air suspension, slacken it off as well, make the steering lighter. I think I prefer the steering with the lighter setting. And now I'm just going to cruise around because this is how most people are going to drive this car. I'm actually going to find the curbs to see what the suspension's like over bumps. There's a curb. Yeah, it's pretty good. I mean, it's very hard to tell on this smooth test track here exactly what the ride quality is like, but the suspension feels comfortable. I can't really tell exactly how quiet the car is because I'm wearing a helmet for health and safety reasons, but it seems quiet. You know, it should be though. It's an electric luxury SUV. Let's get up to more of a speed, so 120 kilometers an hour. Wind noise seems fine. Tire noise, not bad at all. I'm just tempted to chuck it through the bends though. That's the only problem. I need to just remain calm. <laughs> it sort of encourages you to drive like an idiot. Well, that was strange. There's a weird like, little knock through the steering then like a click i don't know what it was there again it's actually underneath the car i don't know whether it's something to do with the brakes or once again i suppose it's something to do with the fact it's not a final production car i'll tell you what though if they can sort out those little niggles as long as they're not on the production car i think lotus have done a pretty good job with this thing it's definitely got a sporty edge yeah it seems perfectly fine and relaxing to just cruise about in as well which is exactly what you want from your luxury electric suv so then what's my final verdict on the new lotus electra should you avoid it should you consider it should you shortlist it or should you just go right ahead and buy it well i can't actually give you my full verdict just yet because i need to drive the car on the road first also this is a pre-production model i need to actually drive the proper production car that customers will get. Hopefully by then, Lotus will have sorted out that slightly weird sensation with the rear wheel steering. If they do, they could be onto a winner. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like. Let me know what you think of this car in the comments below. Click on those windows there for some more videos and on that box there to go to CarWow to sell your car the easy way. All you have to do is upload some photos, give a brief description, then dealers all across the country will bid on your car. It's easy.